So moving from the point where we just were, individual firm, price or wage, quantity of the resource, here we're talking about labor. For the individual firm, might be facing an elastic demand. What that would mean is that your workers are pretty interchangeable with each other. There are a lot of them available. They might go work for somebody else, for example. But there's a particular type of labor market that you're supposed to be able to work with where this is not going to be the case for the individual firm. And this is when you have a monopsonistic market, which is another one of those very odd terms that you probably will never hear in any other context except micro, but you need to understand what it means. So moving away from this idea where you have one firm in, an, in the industry and lots of workers, we're going to change it. All right, so with a monopsony, which kind of looks like monopoly, it kind of is. All right. So what the heck is a monopsony? What we're dealing with is a labor market where, in effect, you've got either one firm doing the hiring or one firm employing just about everybody. demand for labor because the firm is the only demander of labor in the market. So you would expect that the demand curve is going to look a bit different. So if we're going to go through the characteristics of this market, we can add a few more. So this is number one. You have one firm dominating the labor market. Next, the labor. Let's see, we can say it lacks mobility or it's pretty immobile. So if the workers cannot go anywhere else and their only option is to work for the firm, then the firm is going to have more control in terms of what it offers to the workers. So if it's just one firm, if the labor can't go anywhere, then what follows from that in terms of analysis is that the firm is a price maker. Now, when we had lots of workers and lots of businesses making the hiring where the workers could jump ship and go somewhere else, the firm was a price taker because you had that nice flat elastic demand curve. In this case, that's not going to happen. For the monopsonist or in the monopsonistic market, what you're going to see is going to be different. So again, price, wage, and here we're talking about quantity of labor. What you're going to have is demand, supply, okay, looks fairly typical. But your demand curve, in this case, is actually going to be your marginal revenue product. 
And what do we want to add to this market? We want to know what the marginal resource cost is. All right. So using our MRC equals MRP rule that we talked about earlier, marginal resource cost, marginal revenue product, then how do we know what quantity of labor this firm is going to employ and what is the price? You go right here, MRP equals MRC. That's our quantity, that's our wage rate. Now, in the absence of the monopsony, what you would expect is a higher quantity and a lower wage. But because essentially what the firm is doing is exercising monopoly power for the labor markets, then that's not going to be the case. So just remember, monopsony is like a monopoly in the labor market in terms of hiring. What you get is a level where your quantity tends to be lower, your wage tends to be higher.